Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. So we just had a holiday and we're going to have some more holidays. So I thought, why not look at the little golden book of holidays? I don't remember this one at all and I just started to open the cover and it was very stiff and my name is not written in it. That probably explains it. Yeah, but it's a little golden book. You open it once and... It's nice and loose. Apparently you've never opened this. Let's hope it's not a surprise like that one book. This is an actual little golden book. I think we're fine. So this is The Little Golden Book of Holidays by Jean Lewis, illustrated by Kathy Wilburn. That name sounds familiar, but not from Little Golden Books. Huh. June hung up her calendar for the new year. It was a present from Rob, her friend next door. There was a page for each month. On every page, June found special days she could look forward to, holidays to celebrate. There was a whole year of fun. Happy New Year, Rosie, June said, hugging her cat. Then June put on her coat and snow boots and ran next door to thank Rob for the gift. Oh my god, these illustrations are so cute. That cat and girl, oh my god, it's like... Beta backs hugging a kitten cute. Snow was still on the ground in February, but June's kitchen was warm when she and her mother baked special Valentine's Day cookies. I think I'll surprise Rob, June said when the cookies were all done. She wrote Rob's name and chocolate icing on a few cookies. Then she left them in a box outside Rob's door, rang the bell, and ran away. Hmm, doorbell ditching, the positive version. It sounds bad until you go, oh, leaving nice food on the porch of someone. Hmm. The only problem is, once again, I like to go back to the whole thing we were having issues with in the pony episode where this is food. I have no idea where it came from. When his doorbell rang, Rob was cutting a valentine out of red paper. I'll bet June made these, he said, tasting one of the cookies. When he finished cutting out the paper heart, Rob wrote June's name on it with glitter. He slipped the valentine under June's door and ran home to finish the cookies. This book is really cute. It's hitting us with a cute mallet repeatedly, and it squeaks, I love you. The art is fabulous. It's very adorable. The artist is really nice with their line work, the expressions on the kids, the textures on the houses. It has an overall feel of snow, winter. It's very well done. There were special cookies at school a few days later. They looked like little cherry trees. Guess whose birthday is coming, said Mrs. Noonan, the teacher. George Washington's, shouted the class. That's right, said Mrs. Noonan. George Washington, our first president. We celebrate another president's birthday on President's Day, Mrs. Noonan said. Who can help us guess his name? June went to the board and drew a log cabin. Abraham Lincoln! Everyone cried. Yes, said Mrs. Noonan. He was our 16th president. She handed out construction paper so the whole class could make special stovepipe hats to wear. They looked just like the one that Abraham Lincoln wore. Wow. They did an amazing job of capturing what it's like in that grade of school. Because I had flashbacks. <laughs> including them making the paper hats. I don't remember making paper hats. I don't remember the tree cookies either. That we definitely did not have. No, I don't remember having tree cookies. I remember some hats, but they were more like the newspaper hats, not stovepipe hats. Yeah, and the one thing we did do for Washington and Lincoln, I remember, is we actually made giant paper pennies. So I think that was primarily for Lincoln. Mm-hmm, since he's on the penny. Yep. And once again, the art is very cute and well done. The only odd thing I see is this boy's hand and this girl here are just a little, they feel a little off. But other than that, everything's cute as all get out. And you can see June's log cabin on the board and the stovepipe hat, a completed one, and the teacher with the construction paper. Another nice thing you'll notice is the children are a variety of ethnicities. And... 
So you have a nice amount of diversity flipping back. Copyright 1985, so. Hmm. See, I did some flipping back because when we had the cherry tree cookies, I'm like, those don't look like shamrocks. <laughs> when June turned her calendar to April, see, we skipped March. She started to think about making another kind of hat. She and her mother went to the store and chose a plain white bonnet. Then they bought ribbons and yellow cloth. When they were done cutting and sewing, June's Easter bonnet was covered with yellow flowers. Just like the ones in our window box, June said. The day before Easter, June and Rob went to a big Easter egg hunt in the park. They found colored eggs in the tall grass. Rob found the most eggs. His prize was a big chocolate bunny. Oh god, I remember when those were actually chocolate bunnies and not just hollow things that looked like bunnies. That break by the time they're shipped to the store. On the way home, Rob's mother told them why the egg is an important part of Easter. It means new life, she said. That's what Easter is all about. Oh, resurrection. I get it now. I never got that explained to me. I always went, eggs? Okay, it's food. And another cartoon the illustrator's style reminds me of, especially in this particular shot right here, Rainbow Bright. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. In in case you pick up a copy of the book, check for the Amazon link. Obviously, it's in April, but it's the one where June is holding her Easter basket and facing towards the audience and appears to be looking at a very large butterfly. I'm thinking it's more like the butterfly is very close to us. I know, but in describing the image, the butterfly is very large. Yep, it's about the same size as the child. Mm-hmm. It's Easter. You gotta have this for Easter. In church on Easter Sunday, June and her parents heard all about the meaning of Easter. They heard about the new life that came to the world on that special Sunday long ago. The church was filled with white and yellow flowers. June loved the organ music and the singing and the sunlight streaming in through the windows. And they nailed that. Also, it's they somehow snatched all of the pastel colors you usually see and put it into a church because churches usually aren't this colorful they're usually like made out of wood or stone the benches are usually a dark color not a lighter color at least most of the ones i've been in anyways but there's lots of pastels blues pinks light blues browns yellows just very well done very well balanced and a very mild version of the meaning of Easter. So they touch on it without going into being more religiously specific. Mm -hmm. The sunlight grew stronger and warmer as time went by. Before long, it was time for a July 4th picnic. June's family met Rob's family in the park. Together they spent all of Independence Day running races, climbing trees, and playing games. They ate a picnic supper. The fireworks started just after sunset. The sky was lit up red, white, and blue. There was even a fiery sign that said, Happy Birthday, America! Just after sunset. I wish fireworks started just after sunset. It really depends on where you live. Sometimes they start just after sunset. Sometimes they start, like, at nine. Yeah, everywhere I've lived, it's always been full dark. The only thing I have issue with is his face and his arms. But other than that, they captured running kids very well. Yes. And specifically, Lux is talking about Rob running a race with June. But the background's nice. It gives just enough detail to tell you what's going on compared to what you want to be focused on, which are the children and the cute puppy in the background. Mm -hmm. And then there's the big happy birthday America. America. In the sky, in the next page, with fireworks going off, and the kids are holding sparklers. Aren't they, like, illegal now in certain states? It depends on where you live. Fireworks rules vary by jurisdiction. And the old type of sparklers that I remember were incredibly unsafe ones because they were basically sticks of metal that were on fire. Wow! Well, that's what a sparkler was like. It's 
stick of metal and the tip is like on fire. Uh, the newer Safe and Sane sparklers that I've seen basically are really good for doing like chalk writing on the sidewalk. They're different colors and they kind of work like a smudge paint. I don't know how long they actually last because the only people I've ever seen use them immediately go to write with them on the sidewalk, put them out, and then even though there's still like three quarters of a sparkler, they throw it in the bucket of water and immediately go to get another sparkler before everyone else gets another sparkler. Interesting. Bit of craziness. But hey, kids. The leaves turned from green to red to gold. June and her mother went shopping for pumpkins and found one that was just right. June's mother scooped out the seeds. Then she helped June carve a mischievous grin in the shell. That's a big word for a children's book. When they had cut out eyes and a nose and put a candle inside, June had her very own jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. June worked on her costume for a week. On Halloween night, she looked like a scary witch. Rob was scary too. He was dressed as a ghost. Rob's father took June, Rob, and their friends around the neighborhood. Trick or treat, the children called when the neighbors opened their doors. They came home with sacks full of candy. I'd like to say that June's Star Swirl the Bearded Outfit has just the right number of stars. Yeah, but I think it has too many moons. Yeah, it's supposed to be a witch, but it's covered in moons and stars. So I went, this is a perfect opportunity for a My Little Pony joke. Also, the art continues to be cute. I mean, look at the face on the mother. She mm -hmm. just looks so happy and contented that she helped carve this. That's not a mischievous grin, by the way. That's more of a scary snarl, really. Yeah, well, Rose seems to find it scary. I never got the name of the cat. Thank you. It was way back at the very beginning, and it was only said once. The art just nails everything. I've gone as a vampire, a bunch of other things. My brother went as a... Actually, the same year I went as a vampire, my brother went as a werewolf. And that was before Twilight. Yes, way before Twilight. Thank God. Yeah, I haven't been ghost. I've kind of done vampire. I did more sorceress than witch. Surprisingly and sadly, I remember doing a clown costume for multiple years. You must be the scariest thing on the block. I'm still not sure how that ever happened. Wow. Oh, I was a dinosaur one year. I wore that costume all year. My mom had to re-sew it several times. I climbed trees in it. God, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. I'm still kind of obsessed with dinosaurs. There was an announcement at school the next day. Thanksgiving is coming, said Mr. Green, the children's teacher. Our class is going to put on a play about the first Thanksgiving. Each child had a part to play. Rob played a pilgrim. June played an Indian. In the play, Rob invited June and the other Indians to share the pilgrim's harvest feast. Early Thanksgiving morning, June's father took June and Rob to watch the big balloons being blown up for the parade. Their favorite balloon was the giant turkey, but it needed more air in its tail feathers before it was ready to go. So, Thanksgiving? That's a holiday? Don't you just go from Halloween to Christmas? Pretty much, though this year Halloween kind of got screwed into the stick. Also, you don't see stuff about the first Thanksgiving anymore, because people have kind of gotten, oh yeah, the, the way that really happened wasn't very good. So we're kind of going to not talk about that. Let's just have a parade, stuff ourselves full of food, and then go shopping. When June and her father got home, they helped Mother prepare a big turkey of their own. Grandmother and Grandfather came for dinner, and Aunt Jane and Uncle Bill and June's little cousins, Michael and Elizabeth. They all sat down together and said a prayer of thanks. Then they ate roast turkey, stuffing, cranberries, yams, and mince pie. Rosie liked the turkey best. Oh, God, look at the kitty. She liked the turkey best. Also, just like to note, just because of the past of a holiday doesn't mean you can't celebrate the message of it now, which is being thankful for all the good things in your life. Also, I love mashed potatoes. Shouldn't eat them much anymore, but I love them. They're not even mentioned. 
They're on the table. They're on the table, but they're not even mentioned. Also, cranberry sauce and basically cranberry sauce, just turkey sandwich, ham sandwich with cranberry sauce, meats with cranberry sauce. Delicious. Yeah, this is always an awkward holiday because I don't particularly care for turkey. And in the past few years, I've taken on some dietary restrictions that pretty much keep me from eating anything on Thanksgiving. Yeah, low carb. I'm on it too, but on Thanksgiving, I'm like, yeah, this is a holiday, man. This is Christmas. I am going to eat myself full. Well, if I was the one cooking, I would know that the food was good enough to be bothered with eating, but the gravy comes from a packet. The mashed potatoes usually are devoured by other people. Though I must say, my recent Thanksgiving has actually been very healthy. We actually just primarily do meat and vegetables. <laughs> a few days later, June and her mother started their Christmas shopping. They went to the city's biggest department store. June chose a warm scarf for Dad, a mouse on wheels for Rosie, and a new calendar for Rob. Then she went upstairs to see Santa. She told him what she wanted for Christmas. Let's hope her mom was in earshot. She's right there. Also, a few days later? I thought most people just shopped right after Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, remember when this was published, Black Friday hadn't gotten its full power yet. Mm-hmm. I'm mostly making that as a joke. I know a lot of people go, Black Friday, are you crazy? On Christmas Eve, June and Rob and their parents and friends gathered around a big Christmas tree in the park. They sang Silent Night and Jingle Bells and We Wish You a Merry Christmas. One of the neighbors brought candy canes for everyone. Why is it so rare to get a modern Christmas song? I haven't heard any modern Christmas songs that actually sound like Christmas songs. They sound like a pop song that someone came up with that happens to have lyrics to talk about Christmas. Because no one records music in a classic style anymore. So they either do the old Christmas carols as a straight cover or they do them as a pop remix. And then you get a handful of people who do more serious songs, but those don't really make radio play because those aren't the popular artists. Mm. But actually onto the art, this book keeps nailing it. It's all very well done. It's also all very cute. Santa's very nice. Definitely the classic Coca-Cola Santa. And Christmas tree. I love Christmas trees. I time lapse decorating them every year. On Christmas morning, there were presents under the tree at June's house. June found three storybooks, a doll, and a paint set. Santa brought me everything I asked for, June said happily. June's parents liked their presents too. Rosie played with her new mouse all day long. That's like a record for a cat and a new toy. <laughs> but they did not forget that Christmas is more than just presents. June's father read them the story of the special baby who was born in a manger such a long time ago. Ooh, I like the way they did that. Just very gently bringing up the subject. I was more expecting Scrooge, the Christmas Carol, because that story also has a very good meaning to it. And apparently there's being a movie made about his creation. I don't know how historically accurate that is. But the trailer looked amazing because of... So much from the creator's perspective, and as creative people, we're like, yeah, I've felt that. Yes, my characters have argued with me. No, they're not doing what I want them to. A week later, June helped Rob hang up his new calendar. Together, they looked at all the special days coming up, and they remembered all of last year's fun. Soon we can hunt for Easter eggs again, said June. And watch the fireworks on July 4th, said Rob. Happy New Year, they cried at once, and ran outside to play in the snow. Who else is shipping June and Rob? Anyone? It, is it just me? It's just me. Oh, and they're all over the cover. Slightly different art, because in the book version of this image for Easter, he's facing the other way, I believe. Yeah, it's the same pose, but they changed the angle so that his face was looking towards... Also, what he's looking at is slightly shifted because in the one in the book, the egg is back behind the flowers. Here they put it in front of the flowers to make it more obvious. Oh, no. they That's the same thing except from the other side. 
Oh, so they literally flipped it. Yeah. It's actually looking from the back side instead of the front side where June is. And we didn't see that image, that image, or that image, but that's very similar to her sitting on his lap. Yes, June sitting on Santa's lap at the store. And it's actually really similar. Hmm. See, once again, it's kind of just flipped. Except that here it looks like both of Santa's hands are on the arms of his chair, where in this one... They are on the arms of the chair. See, that one's on the back arm and that one's on the front arm. Yeah. But the angle of June's scarf is different. See, it lays down flat in the book and it's going back a little bit on the cover. Hmm. So, what did you think? I definitely don't remember this. <laughs> ever, at all, no way, no how. How did I get this book? I know how I got it recently. My mother brought it down on a visit when I asked her if I still had left any children's books at her house. But I have to wonder how I got this because my mom, when I was little, was very, very good and very consistent about writing my name into all of my books. And you know all the little golden books they have. This little golden book belongs to, and there's no name written there. But other than not remembering it, what do you think of the book? It's very cute. And yes, I know all of the holidays are basically out of season right this second, except the one we're going towards. But it didn't scream at me of, oh my goodness, we're talking about this holiday right now? Because it didn't matter. Because in the timeline of the book, that's when it was. And the art is just so fabulously cute. Oh, the art is adorable. Absolutely adorable. We, like, need to look up this illustrator and see what other work she's done. I was just about to say that, because the art style feels very familiar to me. Like, I've seen it before. Maybe she's done work for children's specials? I don't know. Okay, so this has been The Little Golden Book of Holidays by Jean Lewis, illustrated by Kathy Wilburn. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, comment, watch other videos. There's a whole playlist of Little Golden Books. Really enjoyed this book and you want to see all this art because it's really cute art. Check below for an Amazon link. It's a golden book, so this should be in print, and we should be able to link you to a copy of it. Don't want this book, but still feel like shopping on Amazon? Try the regular link. We do get a little kickback for those clicks if they end in a purchase. Just feel like going shopping? Check the Ebates link. I mean, we are going into that time of year, and people sometimes go a little overboard, and if you sign up for Ebates, you can get cash back you know, rebates on the money you spend. So you're not making money, but you're technically saving money on purchases that hopefully were what you were already planning. Please don't go on an unrestrained shopping spree. I'll feel bad. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Amber's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Yes, I'm going to say the disclaimer every time. Just because you watch this video doesn't mean you watch the other videos. Also by law, at least by YouTube's rules, we have to do it. We do try to be mostly on the up and up, so thanks again for listening.